This is The Wheel Weaves, a Wheel of Time podcast with no spoilers. Hey everyone, I'm your host Daddy, and I'm the first time reader going through this series chapter by chapter. As always, there's no spoilers past the chapter we're covering, and that means it's totally safe for first time readers. I'm joined by my co-host Brett, who's a longtime fan, and he's guiding me through this journey. We'd like to acknowledge and thank our executive producers, Brad Diener and Kirkwood, Sean McGuire, Yanis, Ricky Morissette, Albert Lorenzo, Eddie Costello, Life Blinded Fool, and The Amarillin Seat. And before we get into things today, we want to thank and welcome Night Runner Prime and Spencer McLean to the Wheel Weaves Patreon team. Thank you so much for your generosity and your support. We really couldn't do this without you. And in this episode, we are talking about the second half of the prologue of A Crown of Swords. Yeah, so I guess Lightning's Part 2. Lightning's Part 2. Yeah, there we go. And we've got some good perspectives in this one. I was really excited to talk about it, so. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were a little bit disappointed to stop where we were, but I felt like it was necessary to do it justice, to do yeah. it right, and I was getting a little tired, and I knew I was going to start rushing, and you would get annoyed with me, so... It, w- it would have been bad after, yeah. like, three hours of recording, <laughs> so we're just going to do a good job tonight, and then you can go and read chapter yeah, one. Yeah, I know, two, that's so. really been the most difficult part for yeah, me. Yeah, you didn't get to read after you, no, fit, like, recorded. No, I didn't. Jeez, okay. Ah. Yeah, well, it's interesting, because this book has a lot less chapters, but they're long chapters, Still. Yeah, they so, are. Yeah, like a little bit longer than we're typically used to. So we're, we're going to have to figure it out if we're going to split up some of the chapters. We're going to kind of gauge it as we go, I think. Play it by ear. Play it by ear and we'll see what happens. We are so impulsive. Yeah, a little bit. A little we are bit. reckless and fun. <laughs> That's, just That's what how happens. people describe us in our real lives. Oh, yeah, for, for sure. sure. Yes, absolutely. I'm a little reckless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not in like the fun way. Like no. <laughs> Like the messy, like oh, the no. spilling, like what? the, you know, <laughs> getting that's in careless. trouble. That's careless. That's different. Yeah, that's what you are. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, All man. right. So let's do this. I want to do my fun fact because this one's actually kind of funny. Last episode, I had mentioned that this book has my favorite artwork of like all the Wheel of Time books. I just love it so much. And I had a funny conversation with Tyler today and he po- he went on a bit of a rant. So this fun fact is dedicated to Tyler and it's basically just like excerpts from our conversation okay. that we had today. And if people don't know and they just started listening to us at the beginning of A Crown of Swords. You're crazy, but you know. Uh, Tyler is a friend of the podcast who has been on as a guest in the past. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Real life friend and too. And a real so. life friend too. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he went on a bit of a rant. So I got to point out some of the things uh, that he mentioned. And it's really funny. And I got the big book of bad art in front of us and i made you look at it just a little bit here too it's a good picture yeah it's actually kind of funny too because this picture is a little bit better than the actual book covers and i think it's just because of the size of the artwork and how it's processed versus on the actual books with all like writing over top of it and everything yeah and it's a little bit more stretched out in this big picture so it actually looks a little bit better than what you typically would be used to i like it on the book cover better no okay so here here's the funny stuff so i asked him like hey because he actually doesn't like it oh okay and the first thing he said is we have to spend some time staring at the cover because he described it as an uncanny valley type picture and it's like one of those things where the more you look at it the worse and worse it gets okay (laughs) okay (laughs) so some of the things he mentioned are besides the fact that rand is in his sleeveless tee right besides the fact that he's in a city that matches exactly zero cities described in the book And besides the fact that he's standing beside a giant hole in the ground, the things he hates the most are, number one, how Rand is standing like he's an 80s Street Fighter character, and he actually looks basically the exact same as Ken Masters, and I have a picture of that for you. Oh. How he looks exactly the same. Uh, okay, I can see that. Sure. Okay. With the arm. With the arm, the red... All the good stuff. Sure. Okay. And I had no idea who that was, so I appreciate the picture. I, I thought that would I be important. I feel like other people are going to have to give this a Google, because... You might have to. Okay. Okay. And then also... And once again, we're talking about the Daryl K. Sweet yes, artwork. There, there's a lot of there's new artwork There's a lot artwork of different covers, up. depending on what country you're in and whatever. Yeah. So this is specific to North specific America. Specific to what we're talking about. Yeah. Now, he also mentioned he hates how Rand is making direct eye contact with the camera. I love that. Oh, yeah. Well, you're, apparently you're not supposed to do that. Oh. Right? And then last, and it's actually a little bit more relevant in the actual books versus in this big version picture, is how Rand's back leg isn't actually lined up properly with his body, so it's at an That's impossible angle. That's what he hates. Angle. He doesn't hate the big, weird, eagle head trollic with a knife? 
Yeah, and that's sneaking up on Ren yeah, from behind? Yeah. No. So basically the back leg is like a little bit out of position. It doesn't quite oh, line up properly. Yeah. And it's worse oh, on the yeah. book covers than and it is. And you know what? I actually version. I wouldn't even have seen that. No, no, until but that's why it's like the more that's you look, hilarious. the more you stare, the worse it actually gets. Okay, so. that's funny. So go take a look. Go, go give t- that a Google. <laughs> check it out. But again, I still love this artwork. I still love it so much. <laughs> okay. That's funny. Yeah. I think you love it because it's funny. And Tyler hates it because it's not good. Like, but everything that makes it not good makes it funny. Well, maybe, maybe. Okay. <laughs> now, we are going to enter in our Pedrin Nile perspective. So okay. we just finished. Last time, we heard about Elida in the tower having yep. a foretelling in front of Elviaran. Yep. We talked about Savannah... Yeah, and the Shido. Going back in time, reliving the entire battle with the Shido and them fleeing, and still nobody died. Right, that we know of That we know of. Okay, lots of people died. I keep getting flack for, like, saying no one died. (laughs) Nobody important. No one, like, named that we know. Yeah, nobody we actually care about. No. And so we're going to enter in Pedrin Niles' perspective for the second half of the prologue. You missed the fact that we also saw from Alviar and oh, her meeting right. with Masana. Right, we did see that. Who is in disguise as someone in the tower, yeah. but who knows who. That's right, and she just showed Alviar how to make a flippin' gateway. Yes. So that's where we yeah. are. Yeah, with some strings attached to that. So. A couple strings, but she taught her. She did, that's true. Okay, yep. Pedro Nile, let's do this. Okay, Nile is playing stones with Morgays because in case you forgot, somehow... From last book, Morgaze is basically a white cloak captive. Yes, she is. Very much so. She is stranded there. She can't do anything about her current position. She went to them as a last resort for help. Yep. And she signed over basically all the rights to Andor yes, to she did. the white cloaks. And that's important for this perspective. Yes. And it's really important that it's going to come back as to why Pedro Nile hasn't done anything with that. We'll talk about that in this perspective. Okay. So... Nile is playing stones with Morgaze, and he loses the game to her. And then we see Morgaze playing a part here of being very polite to him and building a relationship. Yeah. Because, you know, they're both very well aware at this point that she's a prisoner. Yeah, but I do have to kind of point out here that she does, like, he knows that she knows that he knows that she's, like, softening him up. But it's kind of actually working. Like, she is a captive, yes, but she's not under... Like, she's not necessarily being tortured. Like, no, it could be no, no, a no, lot no, worse. No, no, no. And she's not being told to, like, just stay in her room and not yeah. do anything or go anywhere. So. Like, don't get me wrong. It's not good because she's totally she captive. Leave. Yeah. But it's like, it is working where she is building that relationship with him. Right. Now, Niall thinks that maybe if he was 20 to 25 years younger, he might be interested in more gays from a relationship standpoint. Yeah. And I just found this crazy. Yeah. Especially on my second, like, read through. We never got an age form before. Now we have one. We have an age. And he's well into his 90s. Yeah. He's like around 90. Yeah. So and that's so a good way to phrase it. So that if he was 75, he could get more gays. 65 to 70. No, no, no. Okay, so he's entertaining yeah. the okay. idea that if he was about 25 years younger, okay. like 60 to 65, then hypothetically he might buy into the games she's playing a little bit. 20 years younger than 90 is 70, not 60. 25 years younger. is 65. That's why I said but 65. But he's in his 90s. Yeah, he's like right around there. So he thinks in his 70s, yeah. he could get more gays who's like hot and in her 50s. Mid 40s. Yeah, mid 40s. Yeah. Okay. Even worse. He's not... Okay, and again, that's the thing. He's not necessarily saying he could get it. He's saying that he would entertain what she's putting down. He's basically not no, at all... No, he'd be interested in Morgays from a relationship standpoint. Yeah, yeah, He's like... <laughs> but, you know, he's got the position, Also, so. oh my god, he's old. He's super old, and that's the funniest part. Yeah. It's like, we never got that hint beforehand, but we also get a second hint at this, like... He thinks about how his first battle was like 70, 70 years, years ago. ago. So if he was like 15 to 20, then that puts it about like 85, 90 ish for, yeah. for his age. Uh huh. So yeah, he's an old, 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 old man. Old, old, old man. man. And he's also a great captain. And Stones is a strategy game that is kind of like hinted at how good you are. And Morgus is actually winning. So Morgus is pretty good too. Okay. Now 
she's a little young for him at little this bit. point in, in his life. Yeah. But she's also trained in Tarvalin, so ew. Yeah, that's why it would never that's work. That's disgusting. Yeah. So Morgaze uses some of her charm to try and make the request again for Niall to order Galad to return to Amador just so she can see him, even if just for a day. Yeah. Which is interesting because the last time we saw her, she was not saying that she cared yeah. If she saw Galad or not. She's like, he's not even mine. He's my stepson. Yes. But now, now turntables have turned. The turntables have turned a little bit. Yeah. And that's, again, Pedro Nile Just, picking up. Like, that would be bad to bring him back because it would put pressure on Galad if he knew that his mother was, like, captive here. Especially considering the most of the world thinks she's dead. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's kind of like a change of pace for all that stuff. And I do find it interesting that Niall thinks to himself, like, internally, that Galad is, like, a really great officer. Yeah. Which is interesting on their view because, like, Galad's mother and sister are Tarval and witches. Yeah. And he's tower trained as a warder. Yeah. But they still accept him into the White Cloaks and he's, like, a really good White Cloak who's rising up in the ranks. We've seen. Yes. Yeah. So it's just, like, a weird... Yeah, but he's a man who's not a witch. Sure. So... But he's still tower, tra- like, trained in the tower. Yeah, but that... It's not he's as not bad. Witch. It's not as bad, yes. but it's like still, it's still not good. He's but a he's... convert. <laughs> yeah, a he's little bit. He's come to the light. Well, and remember who converted him? Valda? Yeah, and yeah. Valda, yeah. He signed his book, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Oh my God. Exactly. That's so funny. I forgot that happened. Yeah. Okay. God. <laughs> <laughs> so many things have happened. Oh my gosh. Oh. Are we in book seven? What's happening? I know, right? Okay. Okay. So th- let's, let's keep going because it's going to get interesting. Okay, so now... Omerna, and I keep getting the Balwer and the Omerna mixed up. Omerna, fake dude. Yeah, fake spy guy. Big, perfect, stunning image of a white cloak, right? Right. But stupid and doesn't know what he's doing. And then, like, scrawny little... Scrawny little little secretary man is Balwer, who's actual spy master. I think of his name as Bowser. Okay. But he's not like Bowser. He's He's the opposite of Bowser. No, he's not. Omerna would be more like Bowser. Okay. But he's got the name. That's how I remember his name. That's all. I don't don't... feel like this is helpful at all. (laughs) (laughs) It's like more complicated. And after this, I don't know. Yeah, okay. Okay. So now Omerna shows up. Yep. Cuts off their conversation and tells Niall he has important news that can't wait. And so Niall dismisses Morgaze and she asks if they'll have dinner this evening. And he's like, yeah, sure. And now, once she's gone, Omerna says that he hasn't found Elena Gawain yet, yep. but the important news is that he has one of those little cylinders with a message for Niall. Yeah, so it's kind of like a testament to how bad Omerna is, because he has no idea where Elena Gawain are, but we get Niall's thought process that Balwer already knows that Elaine's in Abu Dhar. Yeah. And we know that, like, Jacob Carradine is there. He's already sent orders to Jacob Carradine on how to deal with her. Yeah. So, like, that's important. And then Niall's also under the impression that Gawain is still in Tar Valen, and that's sort of true in that he's still working with the Tower Aes Sedai, but Dumai's Wells. Right, so, right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, little important message in a cylinder, I wonder how the bad spy guy got that. Oh, well, it's the same same thing as last time. Omer and I had that last time. So those little cylinders are the ones that are coming from the West Coast for Niall. Oh, I and thought Balwar had some too. No. Okay, whatever. Yeah. I believe you. So Omerna's the guy who got it last time, and then last time Omerna, like, almost forgot to give the message, and now I was like, you're an idiot. How did you almost forget to give me the secret message that that, uh, only I'm supposed to receive? Sure, sure. Okay. Yeah, so that's not suspicious. But this is is the news that he's been waiting for. And we don't get to find out what it is. No, well, Well, we we do. do. We do get to find out, so. Sort of. Yeah. Omerna keeps talking while Niall's opening the cylinder, talking about how he has confirmation that the White Tower is broken and the Black Gaja has seized Tarvalin. Which and is treason to Niall's say that. Niall's own rumor, though. It is, but it's also treason to say that because to all... To say Black Aja because all witches all are witches Black, Black Aja. Yeah. idiot. <laughs> and now Niall's hands are literally trembling as he's opening this note because it's from... The guy in Terabon, and yeah. it's like definite confirmation of the Shanshan yeah. overrunning Because the last time it was like he's got the two guys there and they're not supposed to know each other, but then they did know each other. And then he sent that other person to go with a message that just had to get there to be like, what the heck is going on over there? And so, yeah, this is the confirmation that, yeah, Shanshan are there and they're doing stuff and it's bad. Yeah, and he thinks that even with the whole Rand thing happening, this needs to be stopped. Which is huge, because that is why he thinks, that, like, that's why he hasn't made a move on Andor yet. Because 
because the he Shang-Chan has to deal with the Shang and probably a bigger threat than Tarvalon. Yes, which is crazy and probably true. Yeah. 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 Okay. So now Niall looks up from this note and sees that Omerna is all sweaty and sitting beside him. And he's like, oh, I'm trying to get a look at the message. Ooh. And then he feels a <laughs> knife in his ribs. Oh, man. It's such a good, like, shock scene, too. Yeah. Like, don't see it coming yeah, at all. Yeah, one of those, like, reread the paragraph to make sure I read that right. Like, what? Omerna's actually sweaty and, you know, inching closer so he can kill Pedro Niall. Right. The 90-year-old. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like, wow. Just knock him over. He'll break a hip. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. And then gone, right? No. Okay. Yeah. So, stab, stab. Stab, stab. Yeah. Definitely at least two stabs. Yeah. Shock freezes over him as Omerna, like, keeps stabbing. Stab, stab. And he thinks about how other Lord Captain Commanders have died this way before, but he never thought it would be Omerna. Because Omerna's a stupid idiot. Right. Oh, but you... he's obviously acting on orders. Oh. Yeah. Well, what do you think? Uh, I think this was like an Aswana plan. Okay. Wasn't there a bunch of I said I scheming happening just at the near the end of the last book? I mean, definitely, maybe, possibly. This is possibly. 100% a scheme. This isn't just Omerna decides to kill him for no reason. Okay, well, Omerna's like, oh, like he tell, he says why he's killing him. Yeah, because someone else told him that. Well, he's saying like, oh, you know, you let the witches stay right in Saladar the whole time on yeah. her border. uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, I just want to get your picture. Yeah. Is that his name? No. No. Valda. Valda, yeah, yeah. Also didn't like that that happened. Yeah, nobody did. No one liked it. Okay. This is like, for sure, he's carrying out the orders he was paid to do this. Okay. He's a hitman. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Which makes it like a double cross on Omerna <laughs> if, oh, uh, if like one yeah. of those guys made him do it, so. Well, yeah. Because then There's Valda comes in. There's no way I in. thought ever <laughs> that Omerna, this like kind of dumb spy guy, is the one who's going to be just like killing him. Yeah. Uh, no. Okay, okay. That. <laughs> okay. Not buying it. <laughs> no. So, yeah, this is where Romero starts saying, you know, it had to be done. You let the witches sit in Saladar. And then Niall has his last moments here. He crashes against the table and he lifts his head. To see Omerna backing away from Valda, yes. who's now in the room, who shouts treason and stabs Omerna through the chest. Yeah, it's and, all very action-backed. Yeah, and it's almost like, oh, Valda's kind of in the right place at the right time. Like, what are you doing here? Why did you just show up here now? Were you part of the plot to have him killed? Okay. Because there's clearly a plot happening yeah. between Valda and Aswana. Asunawa. Asunawa. As- Asunawa. Yeah, yeah, but it doesn't seem like they're on the well, same side, though. you didn't correct me when I said it earlier. No, you said it a bunch of times. <laughs> yeah, I was just, like, letting it go, but I, can't, I couldn't let it go anymore, so. <laughs> okay, okay. That's okay. But, yeah, because they're, like, Valda and Asunawa clearly aren't, like, friends or really necessarily in cahoots together, maybe to a degree, but not very much. Okay. And I'll point out why I think that from what the conversation they have. Mm, I think that there are some parts of the plan where... Maybe some parts, but it's like not, they're not fully on board because they're yeah, definitely. You point some... it out when we get there. Okay. And we'll talk about it. Okay. So Niall is on the ground and he sees that slip of paper from with the Tanchico news. Yeah. News. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he thinks it might be missed there and it won't be missed if he's clutching it when he dies. So he tries to get to it. He can't quite. And that's the end of uh, Pedro Niall. Bye, Pedro Niall. Bye. Goodbye. Yeah. And okay. you know what? Okay. Really? Sure. Okay. I've been in the best way possible. Sure. Kind of wanting to see somebody die. Yeah. Oh, okay. I feel like we've gone through so many battles. We've had so many ends of books without... Not enough people are dying. I get it. People dying. It's just not realistic brett okay lots That's of people my are problem dying <laughs> with these books is they're not realistic yeah okay um no and so i went okay this makes sense to me that this guy would get stabbed sure and there'd be all this like turmoil within this organization and okay 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 and i'm not like sad about it because it's the white cloaks i'm gonna try to make you a little bit sad about it oh you are yeah i Let's... mean like pedro Nile, i was sad about bornhold but that was like six books ago so long oh my goodness okay were you sad about that? It wasn't six books ago. It yeah. was four books ago. <laughs> okay. Of uh, Jeffrom. Yeah. Yeah. Jeffrom yeah. Bornhold. Like, that was like, out of all the White Cloaks, that yeah. guy was probably like the best one. Yeah. He only like worked for the faction of people who like murder but villagers. But he didn't want but he was like, them guys, to be murdered stop. all the time. Yes. Yeah. Sort of. Mm-hmm. He didn't really say stop. He was like, ugh, I don't like That's this. That's kind of how I feel about Pedro Nile, too. Sure. Okay. He's like, it's like, ah. I'm not saying that Pedro Nile should be dead. It's just like, 
the implications are, are very bad now that he's not in charge. Number one reason, well, uh, let's just keep going. Let's okay, go. sure, because now the perspective obviously changes because to not he's a dead. dead guy. Not a dead guy. And we don't get yet any perspectives of ghosts. That's true. <laughs> There's still time. Except for Our, Agita yeah, I was gonna in say. <laughs> Teleron Riyadh and oh, Hopper. Sort of. Sort of ghosts. We don't get his... Are they ghosts? Well, it's Teleron Riyadh spirits. Oh, Teleron Riyadh so, spirits. Okay. It's a spirit world. Okay. Oh, man. I don't like that. <laughs> and we technically didn't get their perspective. Do you think that Niall's going to be like, you know... No. Okay. Hero he doesn't... for the horn. <laughs> Hero of the horn, Pedro Niall. You know what? He is a great captain. So, like, hands to him. He's a great captain. And there's only five of them in Randland. That's what they say. So... That's what the stories say. That's what it says. Okay. Eamon Valda, our next perspective here. Let's do it. Valda has just... Wiped his blade on Omerna's clothes, and he realizes that, you know, Niall is barely breathing and on the verge of death, so he bends down to give Niall a quick death, but then a hand catches and stops him. Yeah. And it's... Asunawa. 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 So he's the head inquisitor of the yes, questioners. that's right. Yeah. And he says, would you be the Lord Captain Commander now? Because you might be if I say you killed Niall's assassin. Yeah. But maybe not if I say... You killed. Yeah, you like finished the Niall. job. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So that's why I said like maybe there is some scheming, but th- there seems to be some like blackmailing happening between the two of them. Where if this was like a prearranged plan, where Asuna was like, "Hey, Valda, you become." I the... think it's a prearranged plan with hidden motives. Sure. And like, not all details always shared. Okay, fair. Yeah, fair. That makes a little more sense than like a hundred. Like, definitely not a hundred percent plan between these two guys. And like, maybe Valda was under the impression that if he was there to kill Omerna, yeah, then he becomes whatever works with Asunawa. But then Asunawa shows up and then starts saying, maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Valda's like, uh, no. And yeah. he makes sure that he, right? <laughs> yeah, it's So power that's play, what power I could play. see okay. potentially. Yeah, because we get that next little section here. So Asunawa does the not so subtle blackmail of Valda to try to get him to give more gaze to him in exchange for helping Valda become the Lord Captain Commander, mm-hmm. right? Because the, obviously, questioner guy wants Morgay so he can torture her to death because she's a witch. Okay. And he's been all about that. All right. But this is big because then Valda says, no, Morgay is still useful because we needed to take Andor so you can have her after that happens, but not before. Yeah, fair, good. So, yeah. So this is kind of like, uh, this is kind of the situation. They're still dealing with the Prophet, and they can't move into Andor until that's dealt with first. Otherwise, they'll possibly lose Amadicia right. and just, like, and that's, replace. That's still the, like, Masima stuff. What's Ma- his name? Masima. Masima. Yeah, yep. Masima and the Prophet. So they can't just, like, move all their troops into Andor until Right, and we went the with. entire book of Lord of Chaos with, like, barely hearing from that guy or what's happening over there. Yeah, just after, crazy mobs. After the women left. Yeah. It's just wild. Yeah, and there. Rand heard about it, and he was like, well, you know, it sounds like they're keeping the White Cloaks... Uh, you know, occupied, so... And it also sounds, sounds like he's good. on my side, so... <laughs> yeah, it sounds cool. like maybe an okay thing. Yeah. Which, like, I'm not totally... Like, we gotta get them a little bit under control here, but it's not yeah. a terrible plan. It's... Uh, yeah, so it's anyways... It's not good. <laughs> the reason why I was saying that it's bad that Niall is dead, one of the reasons is because clearly there's, like, this big scheme with Morgays, where Morgays is now 0% safe. Well, Asunawa wants her, and we heard, at the end of Lord of Chaos, he wants her hung yep. from a very special individual gallow. Yeah, that's special gallows. made. Yep. Special and then they're going to keep it. And then they're going to keep it yeah. on display. At the Museum of Gallows and stuff. At the Museum of White Cloak Victories. Yes. And it'll be the only thing there. <laughs> <laughs> no, they got that other one from that dead Amaralyn that they hung. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man. Oh okay. My God. Yeah, it's really funny. But also, like, Morgay's is in a very bad spot now. Like, now, literally, starting right now, bad news bears for Morgay's. I think that maybe her deal, like the thing she signed. Sure. She might have some, like, no, this is void now because I made this with Niall. No, maybe. <laughs> Does it matter? <laughs> uh... Does it matter? No. Yeah. <laughs> 
But also, like, does it matter what Morgay signs? Because Morgay's doesn't have control of Andor anymore. No, she does not. Rand it does. does. Yeah. And Rand's going to be like, shove it up your butt, guys. <laughs> you don't gonna, get Andor. I'm going to meat grinder the white clothes. Yeah. You know what's really, really... Meat grinder everybody. <gasps> now we're thinking, okay, <laughs> kill everybody. Everyone. Right? Well, especially the ones that oppose you. That's that's what I'm saying, yeah. right? Oh, my God. Okay. Also, this you know what? This took what's, a terrible turn. I know. This is why you aren't allowed magic powers. We're good people, I swear. <laughs> just not if just we have magic powers. Just don't put me in a fantasy world. <laughs> and give me unlimited cosmic power. Yeah. It all... Okay. I will use it. Remember last book how you're like, power. oh, I don't like this meat grinder thing. And now you're like, meat grinder. No, of course I don't like it. It's disgusting. It's, it's just useful. <laughs> it, no, it's like, okay. Okay, anyways. I, I was going to say, you know what's the, probably the saddest thing about Morghese's plotline so far? Is All of it? Had she just like hung out in the countryside for a little bit and then just went back to Camelin? Yeah. When Rand's in control? This all would have been better for her. He probably would have been like, I guess you're you're queen still. Yes. Yeah. Like even he if his been plan like, was to have a lane. Thank God you're alive. Yeah. He's like, here, here you go. The plan have, is to have a lane because he have thinks Morghese is dead. Yeah. So it's like super sad if she had just like stayed. He, yeah. Absolutely. I agree with you. And like, there's no way to know because the ravine and all that business, but like, geez. But yeah, if she hung out, yeah. ravine's dead. Like very she, shortly yeah. after she left. Very shortly. Like shockingly Even shortly. Even if she just like stayed prisoner, then at least it could have been explained. Yeah. Yep. Yikes. Yep. Sorry, Morgay. Go, Morgay, saving yourself. Okay. Go, Morgay, saving yourself. <laughs> Maybe getting tortured and killed by the White Cloaks now. Oh, we don't know. Okay. Shoot. All right. You know, okay. It's just like adding more stories for her autobiography yeah later exactly you know love it okay okay poor poor morgues at this point let's get back to the blackmailing yeah because asinawa basically tries to keep blackmailing because of all that just told him no you can't have morgues yeah and so So he says okay well then i guess someone else is gonna have to be lord captain commander then yeah because he mentions the name of the guy already on top of this Pulls a bit of a turntable. He does. And yep. he's like, it's not a question of whether or not I'll be Lord Captain Commander by the end of the day, but your job might be up for grabs. Yeah. So that's like back and forth blackmail. Mm-hmm. And then Asanawa is like, okay. But this is the bad and he part says, too. says, you can examine more gays, but she's not to be put to the question and you can have her when I'm done with her. Yeah. So, so now, again. shoot. Bad news bears. This is bad. Yeah. So now Valda and Asunawa's conversation is cut short by scrawny, annoying Bulwer. Yeah. From. He's not annoying. He's no, good. We like him. No, this is from Valda's perspective. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I'm Valda right now. I'm in Valda's head. I like Bulwer, though. Yeah, I know that. Okay. Valda does not. Yeah. Because they just think he's a secretary. I know that. He's so, literally secret So he shows answer. up. He's. Oh my god, gasping in the doorway because he sees what's happening and Asunawa's like, oh, the traitor Omerna has slain Nile and Valda entered too late to save him, but he did slay Omerna. And yeah. this sentence here is very Romeo and Juliet. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like describing the <laughs> He slew Tybalt, he slew Romeo. <laughs> Right? Like the, Mm -hmm. just the whole, the slew slaying. Here's the explanation of what happened too. And just specifically the slay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. The Claire Danes version. (laughs) Oh yeah, definitely that one. (laughs) Leonardo. Yeah. Yeah. And then at this point though, Valda tells Balwer to go carry the news to each Lord Captain in the fortress. Yep. Because he's calling a meeting of the Council of the Anointed. Yeah, they got to choose a new Lord Captain Commander. And Valda thinks to himself, he does not like twitchy, useless Balwer. Yep. And his first act as new commander will be to to boot Balwer out so hard that he will bounce twice. So it's got to be a thing. Oh there you go. Oh my God, it's such an RJ thing. It happened again. It happened again. Yeah, yeah. It's like the weakest thing you can ever say to anybody. I'm going to boot you in your bottom so that you bounce. Twice. Twice. So you twice. bounce twice. Yeah. Because that's what Perrin yeah. yelled yeah. at. <laughs> Barreling. Barreling. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Out, woman, out. Out, out. Or out, I will out. boot you out so that you bounce twice. <laughs> Maybe it is intimidating. I don't know. I think it sounds stupid. Was that the line that you made me try to say intimidatingly? No. Okay. That was something different. <laughs> also not intimidating. That was the Dobrain. 
oh, yeah, war yeah, call yeah, right, or right, something. Right. Okay. Yeah, no, but this, <laughs> I thought it was so funny because it was like, again. But also, here's the thing about Balwer. So they're thinking like, oh, we're going to kick him out now. But like, Balwer is a super friggin' smart guy. And he knows all the information. He's brilliant. Like, yeah. he is so smart. He probably already knows that you want to kick him out. Oh, yeah. He's probably like out of here on because his own because he's staring at his like. After he leaves, yeah. like, he runs. He gets out. He's gone. And is he actually going to spread this message to everybody? Or, or is, is he, he just, just like, like bailing? Bailing. Before he like maybe gets also murdered because if like you murder Niall. Yes. And then it's like, how that's his secretary. About, how, yeah. He's going to get murdered too. Yeah. Like, I would 100% bail if I was him. So. So, no, after Balwer leaves, Valdo goes over to Niall and sees the tiny slip of paper laying next to his hand. So he picks it up to read it, but the paper has been sitting in a puddle of wine. So whatever was written on it is now gone. Yeah, I love dun, this. Dun, dun, dun. I love this so much because it's such a great piece of writing where it's like we're left with Niall. His last, some of his last thoughts before dying are People this have message. To they this. have to know the Shan Chan are a thing and they're coming or they're here or whatever. Like this is so big and then we don't get to see if he like actually really reaches it or like what happens or if he's pointing at it yeah. or his hands right beside and it's like ooh, he does it's like, know oh it. he does see the paper and, and it's like it's oh gone. yeah it's, the message is gone so now this is terrible because the person in charge of the white cloaks has no idea about the shan shan right because all of niall's like messengers are all secret messengers yeah and, like, even if Omerna was, like, he's dead, too. And then yeah. Balwer, like, is he going to bail? He's probably gone. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. So, it's just, it's it's all it's all bad. All right. So, now, Valder and Asunawa. Am I Valder? doing it wrong again? What did I say? You said Valder. Really? Yeah. Valda. Valda. Eamon Valda. Yep. And Asunawa. Yep. There you go. Nailed it. Make the deal that Valda will become Lord Captain Commander and Valda will hand over Morgays once he's done with her. So, so Just yeah. a little summary. There we go. Perspective change. Okay. A kind of an interesting one, I guess. You know, I like this one. I'm going to play some Gawain defense here a little bit, too. I'm going to try and convince you that he's not such a bad guy. It won't work. It might work. Gawain is on his belly, looking back at the disaster of Dumai's Wells. Yeah. So now they're a few miles north of the battle. This is after he's run away. And he doesn't know exactly what happened after he left, but it seems that Rand is back in control with those black-coated men. Yeah, yeah. So he did manage to escape, which is, I mean, that's a good thing so with far. some so, of his men. Yeah, we get numbers actually later on, and yeah. it is not good. No. So Gawain has a bunch of his thoughts about how now he should have killed Rand and how he should have taken Min out of there and how he's not fulfilling his duty to be a living sword for Elaine and Andor. And he hopes that Egwene doesn't hold his actions against him. Yeah, so I want to play a little bit of defense. Sure. Okay, and maybe maybe I can convince you at least a little bit to not be so harsh on Gawain, maybe, is a bit. Maybe not become a Gawain super fan, but not be so harsh. Not likely. Okay, so first off, we know that he is supposed to be literally Elaine's bodyguard. Yeah. Right? So he's first prince of the sword. He's supposed to, like, bleed before she bleeds, die before she dies. That was ingrained into him by, like, Gareth Bryn at from birth. Right. right? So that's kind of, yeah. like, his entire mission and motto. And he is right now being stretched between a whole lot of factions. So mentally, he's pretty lost right now. Yeah, but let me tell you about what would have happened if... If he did the right thing when the tower was splitting sure. and he didn't murder a bunch of warders, sure. he wouldn't be split by a bunch of factions right now. Okay. You know, there is a little bit of defense And if saying, he didn't just choose to believe some random peddler that Morgaze was dead and Ran killed him, hey, killed, killed her. Let, let me, let me, let me try to play some defense. It's not working. Well, I'm you, you bowling have, through your defense. You are. You're just over-talking. So. <laughs> okay. So right now, he can't go back to Andor. So, like, things that he can do. So he can't go back to Andor right now because Morgaze is dead or gone, but definitely gone, if not for sure dead. Yeah. Elaine hasn't taken the throne. No. Right? Now, Elaine literally doesn't tell Gawain anything and hasn't no. since they were both in Tar Valen together. True. So Elaine absolutely bears some responsibility okay. because she doesn't give him any information sure. when he's supposed to be her first prince of the sword. Sure. She also doesn't want to be around him and she doesn't want him around her or vice versa. Okay. So he can't even act as the protector that he's supposed to be for a sister. Yeah, and they used to be very close. When they went to the tower together, they were close. I even, I remember, talked about how weird 
and close they were. Yes. And like how weird their relationship was. But that started to fall apart, not because of what he was doing. It was because Elaine wasn't sharing any information. That's because she got wrapped up in stuff that she wasn't allowed to share. Wasn't supposed to share. Yeah. Could have. Could have, but didn't. Could have, but didn't. Chose not to. Would have had repercussions if she just shared a bunch of stuff that she wasn't, like yeah. she was hunting Black but then, Asia and, and stuff. then they disappeared. And then Swan also treated him terribly as well, also Galad. Yeah, sure. So it's like, he kind of got the short, and then now his love interest, uh, Gwen, like, says that she loves him, but also isn't taking him with her, and isn't, like, reciprocating in the information telling, and then she just disappeared and didn't share anything, so he also doesn't have anything to do with her. Yeah, I get it. He's in a rough spot, but like that still doesn't excuse his shitty actions. There's some, there's more because then his one connection that he still had was in Tarvalon with the White Tower. Because then after his mother like is dead slash gone, he still had the tower as the one constant in his life because his love interest and his sister and his country are all like in disaster now so he had the tower and yeah we can get on the whole like oh you shouldn't have sided with elida but in the heat of the moment there's not a lot to say that what elida was doing was wrong no and here's the thing like you sided with elida i did and here's the thing here's why i don't like anything that gawain did was because he went flip-flop flip-flop and couldn't make a freaking decision or stand by anything that he did it doesn't that have to do with like oh is he doing what's right? Is he doing what's wrong? It's that he can't stand behind anything he's doing sure. and he can't make a freaking decision. And that's what's annoying about but it. But here's the thing. He would have made decisions if Elaine had taken him in. He could have made a decision if Egwene had taken him in. And right now, the one connection he does have is with the tower. And he's now pretty sure that Elida is trying to kill him too, who he was like raised with alongside. Yeah. So it's like all the connections that he did have that he would have stayed like loyal to have abandoned him yeah but the problem is he didn't stay loyal he did stay loyal he let swan and min go that okay that was where i drew the line so he was so wishy-washy sure. about everything he just did he killed a bunch of warders gathered all these younglings did all these terrible things and then didn't stand behind his own decisions to do those terrible things yeah no, I get that. And it's like, okay, but we're happy that he did let Swan and Min go. But that was kind of being loyal back to Elaine because Min and Elaine he are He should have just like gone with, he should have either gone with them and made a decision or stayed and not let them go and made a decision. Because sure. he's in this situation. He's in the situations he's in. Yes, I agree. It's not. I, Terrible. It's but not let's completely go over, his fault Let's though. go through every single character and every single hardship they've been handed. It's a lot. Sure. Every single character has been handed a hardship and has made a decision. Some I like and some I don't like. Yeah. And yeah, we can go to Gawain's defense if we want. But That's my what gut I was doing. feeling about this character is he can't make a freaking decision to save his life. He doesn't know what's up, what's down, what's right, what's wrong. And I mean, like you said, through no real fault of his own. Yeah. But he would that make still a decision. doesn't make a character yeah. that I like or can get on board with. No, and I get that. It's just like, I feel like he, he would and does make decisions if any of the decisions he wanted to make would actually pay attention to him. Okay, sure. I don't know. I think, I don't know if we're going to see eye <laughs> on this. And I mean, we have the time to sort of chat and discuss Gawain now in this perspective whereas we probably wouldn't get into such a detail about the character of gawain yeah otherwise yeah. uh but um, yeah. not for me okay okay no i get Still it not I get yet it. i get it like get maybe it. maybe there's space for it okay so now at this point he's looking through his looking glass and he sees a woman gallop up on a horse and he's pretty sure that this is one of the Aes Sedai attempting to escape yeah so it seems like some people are getting away now in like the chaos of the battle sure my initial reaction is galena because oh. we know that she just like f and escapes and we don't know where she is or what she's doing. she wasn't That's captured true. at the end okay that we know of yeah we didn't see that we didn't see that so she somehow got out of there yeah in my opinion okay but then gawain would recognize her and be like oh look it's galena riding up yeah it seems like he would have yeah because he just thinks this is un i said i and yeah. you know the thing is very specific in the writing. Her features, her hair color, every nothing is described. The dress she's wearing is described and that's it. And yeah. it's a riding dress. And we knew that all the I said I were wearing riding dresses. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it looks like an I said I attempted to escape in Gawain's perspective, but not one that he names or describes, so we're at a loss. And he sees her horse stumble. 
take an arrow, fall down, and she goes down too. And then he sees about two dozen Aiel heading towards her. So now he's like, oh no, I have to move fast and protect this Aes Sedai. Yeah, there are benefits to him having an Aes Sedai and like saving because, you know, healing for his men. Yes. Like, the ones who are still alive here with him. Mm-hmm. But also, someone answered to Elida because he's not going to be the one to go and be like, hey, mission failed. Right. He's smart enough to be like, I'm not doing that. Right. Okay. So this is where we get some information about his numbers. Yeah. Because he originally brought 581 exactly. Yes. Younglings. It's good to know your numbers. This trip. That's a real thing. You want to know your numbers, your troop count. But fewer than 200 have made it out of Dumai's wells with him. That are that's crazy numbers right now. Yeah. That's like, yeah. Less than half. Yeah. We do know that there were some captured with Rand. Like we did see that. Yeah. So there's some, but that's like a third of his numbers. Are yeah. still around. And then we just get that confirmation that he's pretty sure that either Galena or Elida want him and his younglings dead. And so he gets back to his troops and he's just about to tell them that they have to go and save a sister. But then about a hundred Aeel come trotting over the hill and spot them. And it's fighting time. It's fighting time. Yeah. Basically what's going to happen here is the Aeel are going to just run through them yes and then just like keep going yeah right yeah they assume that they can take down at least a few so like that's what they do okay so they come in it's a fight it's about a page and a half Gawain takes down three Aiel who attack him that's good like yeah pause on that for a second because Gawain faces off against three Aiel plus and kills them all and then another one sword forms yeah Description of sword forms. Very cool. Very cool. But like how good is Gawain that he can kill three Aiel? Yeah. Like he is super good at yeah, sword fighting. Good. Yeah. Good for Gawain. And then he kills another one. And it's actually an interesting note because the fourth one that he kills is like, you know, the big boss or It's a or harder whatever. fight. It's a harder fight and it's one on one. And he kills him because the Aiel stumbles and then he like takes that opportunity and he thinks how he used to like think a duel had to be fair and that would be like a not honorable fight or whatever if you right. won off of like luck. A stumble or but whatever. But now he's like, hey, that's how it goes this sometimes. This is literally life or death. Yeah. yeah so he's, he's like, had some <laughs> actual real life war experience. Yeah. You, if you can kill him, you kill him when you battle, can kill him. Battle, battle, so. uh, battle experience. Yeah. So now once the fight is over, because the Aiel just sort of fight and then just like keep running. Yeah. They, their plan right now is to just keep going. Keep going little bit of fighting but keep going yeah so the fight's over and he tells his troops not to chase after the retreating aiel and he tells one of his guys to keep half his troop here to look after the wounded and the other half to come with him to go help that sister yes. but by the time they get in sight of where she was only the dead horse is there with its saddlebags emptied and there's like a dress on the ground Mm, yeah so like and no sign of the sister yeah so what what do you think happened did she escape or did she get taken she escaped and had time to change okay yep okay well because her dress is dropped and her saddlebags are turned out like she got new clothes okay so she ran away with new clothes gone got away but what about the aisle trotting towards her i don't know okay she ran away from them okay and they it's probably the same thing that having a going is they were on their way and they don't care about her. Okay. They're on their way to get somewhere or do something. Maybe. Good prediction. No, okay. I, I think it's bad. <laughs> I think it's a bad prediction, but I don't have anything else I have for no you. idea. Okay. Yeah, literally right. zero idea. Okay. It's Lanfear. Oh, wow. Crazy. It's been a long time since I predicted someone random was Lanfear. Yeah. It's Lanfear. Well, like, that, that would take a lot. You should have predicted, like, at least a different... It's Galena. <laughs> That's the only other one. Lanfear is gone. For now. Yeah. Maybe this is how she shows back up. She's just like, right here on here. a horse. Yeah. <laughs> That's the worst prediction ever. All right. Cool. It's Masana. Sure. Nope. That one makes more sense. No, it doesn't. Oh, no. She was just in the tower. <laughs> Although she can... Oh, no. It doesn't make sense. That makes less sense. That's the worst prediction. <sighs> That's even even worse prediction. Okay. It's Lanfear. So, <laughs> this is like that meme with the butterfly. I don't know is that one. Is this Lanfear? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any new character we meet? Yeah. <laughs> sure okay anyway aside from that maybe we'll never find out i mean that's possible maybe it's just like not a non-thing and we're spending a lot of time talking about this non-thing that's never going to be talked about again that's possible too or it's very important and integral to the rest of the story are you talking about Ladfear or are you talking about like this writer this writer okay 
Okay, well, we have to, like, let's let's take down the description that we can take down. There was none. I and, looked. And then we'll look for that in the future. There was literally none. Let's no look for none description again. Naked lady. There we go. Running around. Love it. Look for her. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, Gawain orders his troops back to help the wounded. And, you know, because right now they can't afford to split up in search. They don't have enough. And they're just going to get overtaken by potentially more Aiel. And so... You know, it's going to be night soon, and the chapter ends with Gawain thinking that there will be bigger battles to come with bigger and more casualties. Yeah, and it's kind of an interesting line, too, because it's just like the world is going to forget Dumai's Wells and what's to come. It's almost like a narrator perspective where it's like, hey, this was a huge, gigantic, game, world-changing battle. Yeah. Like, this is the introduction of, like, the power being used. By men. A- by men, but also by anybody in like a full on destructo mode. Yeah. We have not seen that, and Randland hasn't seen that. Mm. Like, we saw the Shan Chan doing that, but not right. even to this extent no. of like chaos and damage. So, this is a game changer battle, but this is going to be peanuts to what like is to come. Uh huh. From a narration perspective. So, uh huh. Yeah, it's going to get worse before it gets worse. There we go. Yeah. And that's how the prologue ends. Okay. Let's start the book. Now we can officially start the book because as we know, prologues aren't actually the book. It's like the pre-book. It's the pre-book. It's the warm-up. It's like the appetizer. Calling it a prologue annoys me. It's like the, the, the starter salad that comes. I didn't go to the restaurant for the you start. You know what? I went for the meal. Yeah, I would say that the first three perspectives, like last episode that we did, sure. was more indicative of a prologue okay like the whole going back to the battle from savannah's perspective and sort of kind of seeing things from the tower but it's like, like now maybe. we're picking up with like the but story now again. we're just picking up with where the story is with yeah. Morgaze and nile and with gawain and after the battle like that perspective shouldn't have been in a prologue I from what so. i know and i mean is anyone ever going to get tired of me ragging on prologues well uh probably they already are shoot if they're gonna be but we have a couple more books to, you know, rag on prologues and epilogues. You so. know what? I did think that epilogue appropriate. And that I was said the last that. one. Yeah, yeah. I it thought did. that was, in my opinion, what an epilogue should be. You defended and it. And I am the expert <laughs> in this house. book writing. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> from the zero books I've written, here we are. Okay. What? All right. So now you get to go start and read What's chapter, chapter one. What's chapter one called? Chapter one is called. What's that face for? What? Hi, Chaseline. <laughs> Chaseline. Chesel- Chesseline. <laughs> yeah. I actually do remember. Yeah. I remember... It's one of the words that I've never read out loud before. Hi, Chesseline. Hi, Chesseline. I, that's what I heard the audiobook say before right I pressed before pause. Right before you pause. Okay, Chesseline. Okay. After you were saying that, I was like, oh, I actually do know. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that means nothing. Cool. Okay. It means nothing right now. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. So, you know what? Before you watch the... Super old Lord Captain guy get assassinated and then become the new Lord Captain guy. I'm going to say this is part of the pattern now. Yeah, it's part of the pattern. Thanks so much for listening, everyone. The Wheel Weaves is hosted by Danny and Brett, edited by Danny, produced by Danny and Brett, with Essen, Passion Socks, Mozyme, Moltude, Benjamin, Michelle O'Brien, Jamie Young, Cody Fouts, Megan Smiley, Jonathan Reese, Vince Lewick, and Margaret, with music by Audionautics. If you are interested in supporting us and the podcast and also getting some really cool exclusive merch and access to early episodes and bonus episodes, you can check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash the wheel weaves podcast. For general information about our show and us, like how to send us shot glasses, how to join our discord, how to get in touch with us, things like that. For all things the wheel weaves, you can go to the wheel weaves podcast.com. Please be sure to give us that five-star review because it really does make a huge difference. And tell a friend about us because referrals really are the best compliment. Thanks again for listening because this really is part of the pattern now.